Secret missions? A shadowy war at sea? This is Operation Prime Chance. This isn't your typical military operation. So get ready to learn about what the Navy SEALs and the 160th Special Operation Aviation Regiment, or commonly known as the Night Stalkers, did in this conflict that took place between them, the U.S. and other forces, and Iran. Go grab that drink and get ready to learn about a conflict that, till recently, was kept secret. It's 1987. And tensions that are all time high in the Persian Gulf. Iran and Iraq are gripped in a major war, They're basically turning into a stalemate. But now they start going after neutral ships in the Persian Gulf. This is what became known as the Tanker War. March 17, 1987, an Iraqi fighter jet fires two Exocet missiles at the USS Stark. Both of them hit. The ship is in flames, starting to take water, and the crew is able to put the flames out, control the damage, and no more explosions, and the ship didn't sink. Iraq offered a apology. Unfortunately, 37 members of the U.S. Navy lost their lives. Also, none of the countermeasures worked, or they weren't manned and ready. Then in July 1987, the United States starts Operation Earnest Will and Prime Chance. This was an operation to protect Kuwaiti oil tankers with American flags. But this operation wasn't just about conventional warfare. This was a debut in secret of US SOCOM, or the United States Special Operations Command. But it's a treacherous battleground. The Persian Gulf, a seemingly calm body of water. You got shallow depths, you got oil platforms, and on top of all that, you've got 600 miles of the eastern shore being lined with Iran. This makes it a perfect shooting gallery, and it also makes it good for unconventional warfare. Rear Admiral Bernson realizes that this isn't your typical operation. You've got a conventional warship escorting commercial tankers, and that's taking all the media attention. At the same time, Operation Prime Chance is commencing, and this is the brainchild of U.S. SOCOM. The Joint Chiefs of Staff did all the planning, and in their discussions, they came up with a problem. They didn't want to bring in larger vessels like aircraft carriers to launch the missions from. So the problem was, what do you do when you're going to be launching a lot of special operations into that area, but you don't want to bring in larger ships to support it? Well, the solution was they were going to use a barge, actually two. And after they did so, another problem arose. What's worse to lose? A barge, possibly 50 or more men on it and their equipment, or billion dollar aircraft carriers. After thorough inspections and debates, made the bold move and decided to use the barges instead of the aircraft carriers. These barges were called Mobile Sea Bases, or MSBs. With the green light given, Mark III patrol boats sprang into action, conducting patrols and intelligence missions from September 9th onwards. Barges Hercules and Wimbrown 7 were used to launch the missions. This also included the Night Stalker, flying off of frigates or destroyers. The barges became home to many special operations and conventional units. This included the Navy SEALs, the Navy EOD or Explosive Ordnance Disposal, Navy SWIX, or Special Warfare Combat Crewmen, the Night Stalkers with some of their helicopters, their pilots and crew, Navy support for the barge, and also the Marines. This is an operation where the Night Stalkers adapted, and they took on the threat of the Iranians without any hesitation. Under the cover of darkness, often flying maybe 30 feet off the deck, these skilled pilots were doing search and destroy missions with high-tech equipment such as night vision and infrared thermal looking devices or flare. They were using AH-6s and MH-6s and were often named either Little Birds or the Flying Egg. Despite initial doubts about the Night Stalker's stealth capabilities, one night they decided to do a mock operation. They basically came up onto Admiral Bernson's frigate without him even knowing, replying on the radio when they were within range, bang, we got ya. From that point on, the Night Stalkers had a call sign of Sea Bats. On September 21st, 1987, the world witnessed a breathtaking display of strategic maneuvering when an IRGCN, or Iranian Revolutionary Guard Corps Navy, detachment took control of an IRIN, or Iranian Republic Islamic of Iran Navy. Sorry, last stuff. 
and they took control of an LST called the Iran AGR. The vessel was manned by both the mix of IRIN and IRGCN crews, and to say the least, they didn't get along. They harbored a covert agenda. They wanted to deploy 18 Sadaf O2 mooring mines, and they wanted to block the channel leading to Bahrain. However, the cloak of secrecy behind the Iranian vessel was soon uncovered by the vigilance of three Night Stalker helicopters that had discovered it. The helicopters came from the USS frigate Jarrett. They swiftly responded to investigate the suspicious activity of the boat, and they caught the Iran AJR in the process of deploying the mines. This prompted a decisive engagement by two of the H-6s. For 10 minutes, they strafed the Iranian vessel with miniguns or machine guns and rockets. After action reports said that this continued on for about 10 minutes. The mine layer was smoking and had several fires on it and took a lot of damage from the AH-6 attack. But the Iranian vessel defiantly decided to continue laying mines. Maybe not the best decision by these guys because the Night Stalkers just turned around and attacked them again. Some crew abandoned ship, several were wounded, and five were killed in the attack. Along with the helicopter attack, they sent in U.S. Navy SEALs and EOD to perform a VBSS, or a Visit, Board, Search, and Seizure operation on the Iran AJR. As the SEALs and EOD took control of the vessel, they did find nine or ten mines still on deck ready to go. This number is a little debated because there's different numbers from different sources. A further search of the vessel found logbooks and other documents that also gave them a place to find the previously laid mines. 26 Iranians were captured in this mission, and they were repatriated back to Iran wearing U.S. Navy shirts and hats. As the dust settled on the Iran AJR, the vessel yielded invaluable intelligence and they were able to look inside the war plans of their adversaries. Secretary of Defense Caspar Weinberger made a remark that pretty much summed up the magnitude of this operation. He said, that's the biggest load of groceries I've ever seen. This didn't end the story of the Iran AJR. It was taken into international waters, it was scuttled, and this was pretty much the finale to this confrontation. Another operation took place on October 8th, and this was where a group of Little Bird helicopters were escorting a reconnaissance surface patrol. The flying eggs from the Night Stalkers took off away from the boats, and they were going to meet at a waypoint at a marker buoy. When the Night Stalkers got to the buoy, there were three Iranian gunships on patrol there, and they decided to open fire on the Night Stalkers. Probably a bad idea. The helicopters returned fire. All three of the ships were sunk. Later, special operations boats found six survivors. Unfortunately, two did not make it due to their wounds. All were returned to Iran. On the same night, on the barge Hercules, 40 small vessels were picked up on radar heading right towards them. Well, they must have changed their mind and that was probably one of the best decisions of their lives. The U.S. was ready to respond. The USS Thatch began a course to intercept these many battle groups, and also six AH-6 Little Birds took to the air also to intercept them. The six Night Stalker helicopters approached the formation of the mini battle group from Iran, and they just were looking to basically continue the ass whooping that they had already dealt out to the Iranians before. Luckily, the Iranians decided this wasn't a good night to lose their lives, and the vessels turned around before any engagement happened. The other significant operation was under Operation Nimble Archer, and this was the U.S. going out and trying to neutralize or make ineffective the Iranian silkworm missiles. Intelligence had found that two to three of the Iranian oil platforms were being used to spot for the silkworm missile attacks, and it was also a launching point for their attack boats. On October 17th, four U.S. Navy destroyers approached the platforms. They gave all the crews on the platform time to leave, actually giving one of the platforms extra time to get off. All the Iranians left before the attack, and the four ships opened fire on the platforms. In the attack, over 1,000 rounds were fired. 
one of the platforms was completely sunk and the other platform did stay above water. After the firing was over, a group of US Navy SEALs was able to enter onto the platform that was still standing. This yielded a lot of intelligence and they found logbooks and documents and they were able to also find silkworm missile batteries. After the intelligence was taken, the SEALs planted several explosives on the structure of the platform and they sunk it. As tensions mounted, Operation Praying Mantis emerged, and this was a decisive blow to the Iranian Navy, and this pretty much ended their aggression at that point. The American forces struck with precision, crippling the Iranian naval capabilities, and pretty much secured the victory in the Gulf. If you get a chance and you want to know more about Operation Praying Mantis, be sure to check out the Fat Electrician's wonderful titled Proportional Response, and he explains what the US Navy did. A link will be provided to his channel and to his video. In the end, Operation Earnest Will, Operation Prime Chance, Nibble Archer, and Praying Mantis were a success. They meted all their goals. They helped to neutralize the aggression towards neutral merchant ships. And as for US SOCOM, it marked a historic milestone. It proved their effectiveness in all sorts of different environments. Many more details in these operations still remain classified even today. If you enjoyed this deep dive into the world of Special Operation Forces, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more intriguing content. Don't forget to check out my community tab on my channel's page, where I'll be posting different polls, different times that I'll be live streaming, and if there's anything that you just want to talk about in relation to Special Operation. If you enjoyed this content, check out these other videos. Thanks for joining us. See you in the next video.